Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where I open my mail. Yes, let's get straight into it. From parts person unknown, uh, from parts unknown, no, it's not from South Melbourne, Market Street in South Melbourne. So, um, if you don't know where South Melbourne is, fellow Australian, and that's who it was sent to, that fellow crazy Aussie bloke. So thank you very much, anonymous person. We'll probably find out who you are, and let's have a squiz you've sent in. Ta-da! Ooh, I like, I use some of this gear. Samson, what do we got? We've got a Samson. Um, Samson make um, a pretty good audio gear. I use uh, Samson uh, mic and uh, for my uh, podcast, Ampower Radio Show, and I use Samson uh, headphones as well. So they make some pretty decent gear at a good price. This is a, um, it's a control room, Samson control room matrix. Two minute tear down. Hang on, it comes from Drew. Thank you very much, Drew, who's a uh, music production geek. And we have something else in here too. Ta-da! For all you fanboys, for all you TI fanboys, it's a TI-83. Have we done a TI-83 tear down before? I don't know. If we haven't, another two minute tear down. Four minutes worth of tear downs coming up. Beauty. Okay, I will not pretend to know exactly what this uh, control room matrix thing does, but anyway, a bunch of um, phono and um, RCA, oops, speaker, A, B, some phono inputs and stuff like that. Hmm, let's crack it open. Well, that's pretty basic. Check it out. Just a double-sided board in there or through hole, um, at least on uh, this board, and uh, just lots of um, discrete wiring in there. Got some relays at the back. Have we? Yep, looks like it. And, uh, well, a absolute metric buttload of caps. Look at that. Wow. Hmm. Peck? Or is it Rec? I don't know. Brand caps. Haven't seen those before. Oh, I don't know. 85 degrees C. Mm, you know, it's only a low voltage thing, so, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, then as some surface mount job. Oh, nice. Melf diodes down in there, check them out, you know I'm a bit of a MELF fanboy, MELF package fanboy, and uh, that looks like it's been wave soldered, because you can tell, oh I lost my pointer, you can tell it's been uh, wave soldered, because there's a whole bunch of through hole stuff on here as well, of course, on the front, because that's all the uh, knobs and everything directly, you know, LEDs probably, and uh, switches, and uh, probably LEDs behind the switches there, all uh, through hole Mounted on that board, but you can tell it's wave soldered. As you can see, the glue, the red glue, oozing out from under that SO8 package there. So yeah, not blown away by that uh, bit of Samson kit, but like as I said, like Samson uh, make you know reasonable quality stuff. It's reasonable quality, and it does the uh, business for a reasonably cheap price. Um, designed and engineered in the United States, but of course you know made somewhere in China probably. Not that that's a problem, but yeah. Anyway, that's inside a control room matrix, whatever it does. I don't know, you can mute things, you can choose speakers and... Oh, right, so, okay, a control room, what, the control room monitor speakers or something inside a control room, perhaps? So you can switch your, uh, switch your monitor speakers or something, perhaps? I don't know, talk back, you can talk to someone in the studio, is that it? I don't know. That's why it's probably got, it's designed to go on a desktop because it's got these front feet larger than the rear feet. So obviously designed to, you know, mount on a desk like that. Hmm. Anyway, thanks Drew. All right, let's see if this puppy still does the business after all those years. Put in the four AAA batteries. We've got a uh, little coin cell back up there. Here we go. Will it do the business? It's alive. Yeah. And sorry, never like the TI calculators, don't like this one. Look, the exponent key is up here and it's shifted. Are you kidding me? Like the clear keys over here, it's not like color-coded red or something like that. Nah, give me the bloody Casios any day of the week. And let's see what this 1999 technology brings. We're going to party like it's 1999. Ta-da! Ah, oh, quad flat packs. Look at that. PLCC package. Soldered directly down. Ah, oh, is that? Look at that alloy backing. Wow, look at that. Look at that alloy plate. Wow. It's a monster. It's not like they're trying to dissipate any 
uh, power or anything. So that's obviously done as a weight thing, sort of, you know, to just to weigh, just to make the thing weigh it down a bit. The whole thing comes out, by the way. Look at that. That's actually quite neat. I like that. Woo. And there's the front side of that. Just got all the uh, contacts for the buttons. And you can actually see, there you go. You can see the die in there for the uh, chip on flex. Look at that. That's the uh, LCD driver directly on the back of there. Bingo. But yeah, there's not much to it. Got ourselves a Toshiba processor. That's got to be SRAM. Don't even need to look at the number. So that memory is going to be the uh, program memory, of course. Um, it's SRAM. Don't even need to look at the number. Backed up by the uh, uh, battery here. And this little puppy must have something to do with the LCD because, look, a couple of traces running out there to the LCD. So if it was just something else to do with it, just the processor, then, well, yeah. Why would it go off to the LCD? So not sure what that thing's doing. And serious business there with a half amp surface mount fuse. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just in case. Next up, looks like we have a direct eBay shipper. A lot of people like to just like randomly uh, buy something cheap ass on uh, eBay and send it to me. And yes, it's got gift written on it. So let's check it out and uh, see what's inside. This, no doubt it's going to be cheap ass. It, it almost always is. Um, yeah, you can tell like it's just classic. Like you don't, I don't even know it's eBay, but you can pretty much, you know, I'm ninety percent sure somebody has like ordered this on eBay and sent it to me. So let's have a squeeze. The Eek the Eck Dream. It's not Eco Dream. It's the Eck Dream. Oh God, it's a smart watch. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hang on. Yeah, it's cheap. You can smell it. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this thing. All right. Uh, we've got a smart, a generic smart watch. Oh, goodness. And a USB cable. <gasps> How much did it cost? The Eck Dream Smart Watch User Guide. Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid to even turn this on. What's it got? It's got messaging, call log. It's got Bluetooth, anti-lost. It's got an anti-lost feature. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a ringtone barometer, altimeter, pedometer, yeah, 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 right, here it is, ta-da, oh, look, little doors fallen open, that's the, uh, little micro USB there, presumably it will charge through there, of course, and, uh, not much else, pretty crusty, yep, just in case, well, when the software locks up, uh, yeah, you probably got to, uh, um, well, would that be a reset? Hole, or would that be like the, um, you know, the barometric pressure sensor or whatever they said they had in there? Hmm. All right. I think I'm afraid to turn this on. I assume that's the button you push. Well, thankfully it doesn't seem to turn on or be charged because I don't really care. All I want to do is get in. And it looks like it's stuck. The backing is stuck down with adhesive tape. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh wow, that is so cheap and cheerful. Wow. And here we go. We're in like Flynn and uh, yeah, there's our little lithium ion battery, if you uh, believe that. Yeah, I've got a bridge to sell you, but um, yeah, that's it. Jeez, there's not much, is there? Not exactly super duper high tech. Hey, check it out. Little tactile dome on top of this USB connector. It's on like a flat flex. Definitely a tactile dome switch. So is that some sort of tamper, anti-tamper mechanism? Yep, is that, well, I don't know. Something pushing down on that? Doesn't look like it. Maybe that. Hmm. Well, that really is completely boring. There's a MediaTek ARM processor. The speaker, check it out. They've actually got a little amplifier box. Look at that. There we go. That's going to just add a little bit of low end to that uh, puppy. So they're just guiding that out there. So they've gone to a lot of effort just for the, uh, just for the speaker there. And uh, as I said, that flat, that uh, tactile dome switch comes off on that flat, flat, flat flex down to here. So they've got a little mic in there. 
Has that got a rubber insert? Oh, they've at least done that reasonably well, so the vibration doesn't uh, come through. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just completely boring. There's our um, LCD driver, chip on flex, and Bob's your uncle. And there's our Bluetooth antenna. Look at that. They've just soldered a wire on there, whacked it under the speaker. <laughs> oh, she'll be right. This is a bit interesting. You'll note on the top of the, well, the back of the case here, they've got this little... Uh, uh, protrusion which just pushes down on the flat flex there it's not like a, you know they're using a, there's some sort of heat sink or anything they're just trying to stop that from flapping around in the breeze so could that be some attention to detail perhaps hmm anyway yeah typical El Cheapo smartwatch wow look at it just a MediaTek processor and yeah, LCD and not much else Next up, one from Deutschland. Hi to all my German viewers. Are uh, from uh, Alexander Nessane, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, from Bitshift Dynamics. Good name. Got to be careful how you pronounce that, perhaps. Hmm. Let's uh, see what he sent in. Ta da! What is it? A Unity Media. Okay, it's some sort of RF splitter or something. Yep, something like that. Another two minute. Tear down, but we have a note. Hang on. First of all, thank you for your great work. No worries. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we upgraded the internet connection and received this cable splitter to our TV and cable modem. It's connected to a 12 volt supply. Um, obviously gone. It's probably um, just a well, a splitter is basically some resistors in a box. That's pretty much all it's going to be, I suspect. But let's tear it down because, like a phantom, well, sorry. No, it's going to inject the phantom uh, voltage. Not phantom, but mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Um, and it's going to inject the voltage for the uh, amplifier, uh, the masthead um, amplifier. And they usually, um, oh, well, it's probably got, in that case, it's probably got an inductor in series with it and an AC coupling cap, but probably not much else. And there's the metal can inside this RF switcher. That's it. There's nothing else in there. Well, we'll have to crack this one open. Soldered shut. And I tore this thing apart with absolutely no thought about uh, ever putting it back together. And there's actually more in here than I thought there'd be. I'm very, very surprised. Anyway, there's, there's quite a significant amount of stuff. Anyway, here's our um, RF um, inputs here. And they've uh, got PTC protection on there. We've got an inductor going down to ground there. And we've got some... Yeah, it's coupling in there. And um, what do we got here? Is this some sort of... Uh, that's some sort of power amp package or something? I don't know. Why we've got this little tiny shield in there. So it doesn't look like any active stuff in there. It looks like all uh, passive stuff. But anyway, they've decided to uh, shield that. This is just the, if you're wondering what's in here, I won't even bother. That's just the uh, DC input there. The shielding that from the rest of it. But, uh, oh, look, we've got a little uh, transformer there. Is that a little tranny? I think it might be. Anyway, yeah, um, I don't know the specs of this thing. I'm not s sure what it's actually supposed to do. Here it is. There we go for those playing along at home. That's what it's supposed to be doing. And you can see the output from the DC there being coupled way, way through there to <laughs> this huge inductor. Nothing's getting back out of there. No siree, Bob. And uh, do we have a bot? Oh, no, no, that's a little bit of heat shrink. I thought that was a bit of a bodge there, but... Uh, she ain't. It looks like we've got some regulation happening there. and uh, But apart from that, looks like oh, we've got another transformer here. And an amp. Uh, okay. So, yeah, transformer in, transformer out. Or is that? No, or is that some sort of common mode choke? Not entirely sure. Hmm. And that's a PW128. I'll link in the uh, data sheet. In fact, I'll hopefully insert it into the video here. And that's a, a CATV amplifier. So... There you go. Uh, this thing actually has a decent amount of stuff in it. Nicely laid out. Look at all the big uh, via stitch in here. Oh, yeah. Lower the inductance of that ground plane top and bottom. No worries. So there you go, all you RF aficionados. You've got something to have a look over. Enjoy. Next up, one from the United States of America from uh, Eric Thorsten. Thank you very much, Eric. He's from uh, Poolsbo. I guess in uh, Washington is it in and he's got on here attention possible teardown Tuesday topic what's inside it bends so teardown Tuesday all right 
possible tear down Tuesday topic. Let's have a look. Last time I got anything that I can that springs to mind that's uh, this thin, that's a possible tear down, is one of those magazines that had the um, LCD built into it, the media player. It was like an advert. Is it a similar thing? Um, Supreme. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. When I see the word Supreme reference cables in a fancy wank marketing package, hang on. I think I might smell audio fool bullshit. Let's take a look, am I right? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. And postcard time. Uh, Eric says 50 years ago this was really downtown. You did your shopping here, got your car fixed at Willie's Auto. Now it's all gift shops. The only thing left is a bakery. Oh, that's that's pretty sad. Anyway, nice little town. Check it out. Poolsbow, Washington, if you want to visit. And sure enough, Eric has sent in a brochure for a 50. 54,000 US dollar six foot speaker cable. The Odin from Nordist, or however you bloody well pronounce their name. Oh, he couldn't provide one for a test, though. I mean, what's the problem? Credit card. Come on, everyone's got that sort of limit on their credit card. Piece of cake. And he goes on with things to test for, things to consider. With my experience in sonar engineering and sound wave propagation, maybe I can explain how they are directional. I can certainly explain that. You see, any expensive speaker cable like this, which is directional, contains nano bullshit particles. And these nano bullshit particles only allow the current to flow in one direction without any distortion. So if you're flipping around this way like this, it's you're just going to get extra distortion as it tries to beat against all the little bullshit particles in there like that. Everyone knows this. Now, I'd actually love to show you all of the uh, whiz-bang technology inside. Oh, isn't that a nice wooden box? Fantastic. Love to show you all the technology inside this thing. Oh, that looks fancy. But, unfortunately, there's you've got to have a block of wood on there with, you know, I like... But the only place this thing belongs, including these stupid power boards, is... You guessed it. Next up, one from the Czech Republic. Don't get many from the Czech Republic, but we have had them before. Hi to all my viewers in the Czech Republic. Awesome. Uh, one electronic board. Oh, sorry. It's from uh, Paul Nissel. Thank you very much. Without the E. I don't know. Is that a, a uh, regular N-I-S-S-L? Last name. There you go. Don't need the E or anything. I'm assuming it's pronounced... That's how it's pronounced. Anyway, um, scan with any QR reader. Cool. I've got a board. Let's check it out. It's even written on the back. Hi, Dave. I'm a huge fan. Thanks for introducing me to electronics. Uh-oh. Indiegogo. Um, January. Sorry. Um, if you do have time-sensitive Indiegogo stuff, yeah, you probably should, like, market huge, big, red texter on the outside that, you know... Please open by blah blah blah. Otherwise, oh sorry. Hope it worked for you. Oh, let's check it out. And here's Paul's little product, which was an Indiegogo, but I looked on the Indiegogo page and um, it was shut down before it raised a cent. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it's called the Quick Tag, and as you can probably guess, it's look a barcode tag, and that's it made out of PCB. It's got a unique barcode on there, and uh, what you do is presumably, I haven't checked, but presumably you activate, right, you um, scan it with, uh, you activate and set your info in there and you attach the belongings in case it's uh, lost. A little caliper for Sagan, thank you very much. So Paul says he wants to uh, show it to us, but unfortunately it's shut down. So maybe you can explain what happened there. Um, my take on it is that, well, nice idea, but why not just have a tag with your name and address and phone number on it? It's just an extra step for people. Like, you know, like a baggage handler or something finds your baggage. It's lost somewhere. They're not going to, you know, want to find a computer with a, a scan or get their phone and scan the thing and, and be taken to some website somewhere. The website could be down. I don't know, whatever. Um, just to find someone's phone number or the address or whatever 
that uh, they were supposed to send it to. I don't know why you just regular tag with your name, address, and phone number. I don't know. Sorry, Paul, unless there's another um, aspect to it. I don't know. I'll stick with, you know, good old handwritten tag. Thanks. Next up, another one from Deutschland from Firma or Terma. I don't know. The F, like, it's like a capital T, but with a stroke through the middle of it. So it's, I don't know. Um, I guess that's just how they write. So it's Firma or Terma. Uh, Kubrick, thank you very much, uh, in Prisendorf. Okay, let's have a look. I'm a bit disturbed by the uh, title on here. Um, the description, sorry, title. <laughs> it's like everything's a video, needs a title. You know? um, hmm. So let's, um, I, can, <laughs> I can only think of one reason why someone would send me. It's an assortment of hose clamps. Beauty. Safety hose clamps for pressure applications. Good day, day. I've seen your video on hose clamps. I'm sure that you've not seen this nice system. What? When have I ever done a video on hose clamps? Have I? I've mentioned it before. The only I've probably mentioned it um, somewhere along the line. The only thing that reminds me of hose clamps is uh, one of my favourite um, sketches from the 80s. I think it was, which I'll no doubt um, copy this in, um, from the Dodgy Brothers. We will not be beaten on two and a half inch hose bits. An economy sized drummer paint stripper, what every mother needs. And of course, three and a half inch hose bits. We won't be beaten on hose bits. <laughs> what do we say, Dodgy Brothers? We're the largest warehouse full of three and a half inch hose bits in the Southern Hemisphere. All colors are available, Arthur. Now, I'm not sure where uh, Klaus, love his last name, Klaus Berger, thank you very much, uh, got the idea that I showed hose clamps. Did I? I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, um, he's sent in these, so let's check out hose clamps for all you hose clamp aficionados. But I'll tell you what, these things are sex on a stick. Look at this. Perfectly circular. And I've, I don't think I've seen hose clamps like this. And they continue being perfectly circular as you close them. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, fantastic. Don't know about that one. That's a bit dodgy, brothers. <laughs> um, yeah, not sure what, how that one's supposed to work, but all of them, very nice. <laughs> Check them out. If you're after, oh, this one's even got a, look, look at that. Look at that. Wow, I could play with these for hours. These are great. Another eBay special. It says electronic parts. <laughs> oh, be afraid. Here we go. So the squeeze. Please not in a bloody another anion static wrist strap. It's not. It uh, comes in a static. Oh, static shielding bag. Oh, wow. Awesome. They're modules of some description. I don't know, I've got to open them, like there's there's nothing in there. Electronic parts, got a bunch of modules. Oh, let's check them out. Okay, why I've got these four boards and what I'm supposed to do with them, I've got no idea. There's two of each, let's take a quick look. Now, I'm gonna guess that this is some sort of um, stored audio player because, well, what we've got is SP plus minus, that's gotta be speaker, right? So, and then we've got uh, previous, next, uh, mode, repeat. So I'm thinking, and an SD uh, card here, micro SD card. And I'm guessing that's what it's supposed to do. Some sort of audio playback device thingamabob. Hmm? And check it out. The bastards have lasered off the top of the, both of these chips here. What the, why? Unbelievable. And this board here just looks like a smaller version of it, like a, you know, little mini one you'd build into some appliance or something like that. Just speaker wire output, battery, and um, Bob's your uncle. Eh, if anyone has any idea, links to these things, um, where you can buy them, what they, what exactly they do, I don't know. We're on a roll now. Yet another eBay special. Oh dear, be afraid. Oh. Uh oh. 
Wah, 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 wah. I can pretty much do that without even opening this thing. Oh. What's that smell? That's the smell of fear. It's one of these, like, yeah, $5 delivered molding meat. Oh, it's just, like, feel the weight of it. Ugh. And we, you've got to be worried when your multi meter comes shrink wrapped for your protection. Hmm. Oh, and it's got the transistor tester. And let's see what eight Australian dollars, including postage from China or Hong Kong, gets you. Oh, the transistor tester. Oh, it gives me the heebie jeebies. Oh, here we go. Here we go for all you cheap multi meter aficionados. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, Bodge City, look at that. Just the backlight there, just, you know, yeah, let's just solder that on, no worries. Looks like, damn. <laughs> Looks like your backlight's about to short out in there. You got the little strand about to make contact with the other one. Hmm. Oh, and the speaker just bodged in there, screwed in. Unbelievable, look at those input sockets. Look at the crusty 10 amp jack on this thing. Oh, yeah, it's a 10 amp jack. Oh, wow. They've even, have they tried to <laughs> trim it with a little bit of solder on there? I'm surprised they even bothered. Oh, chip on board, the uh, choice of uh, cheap multimeter champions, of course. And one single adjustment pot. Thank you very much. Oh, what a, what a shocker. Coaster. Coaster Alec. KM88L, that's the, I guess they're the uh, original manufacturers of this thing, but oh, 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 yep, you guessed it. And just because I can, I'm going to chop into these crappy one hung low leads and see what's in them. Wow, I'm surprised there's actually copper in it. Flying through them today. I want to get like all the small packages out of the way. I've got a couple of big ones uh, recently, but you know, I get in that habit of oh, it's more exciting the bigger it is. So I tend to open the bigger ones first. So just going through a bunch of small ones. Sorry if I'm not going to get around to it. What are we up to? Nine or ten or something like that already. This one comes from Emmy. Thank you very much, Emmy. Um, Am Amstein and Sleen Amstein from Switzerland. Hi to all my Swiss viewers, and I do like the, uh, oh, hang on. Don't mess it up, Dave. Just pull the red strip thingy. But I can't see the red strip thingy. I can't access the red strip thingy. Like, it's in there, but it's not like... No, see? No, it's a fail. Yeah, the re Look, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the red strip thingy is like, it, it. it's not like out, so you can like grab it and pull it. No, it's a fail. Oh, there we go. Oh, was it? Oh, it came from the other side, but I still didn't see it because I think it had some tape or something on it. Oh, I don't know. Bloody opening packages. Anyway, awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Because you know I'm a fanboy. I am a Victorinox fanboy. I've always been a Victorinox fanboy. I'm not a Wenger man. Sorry for all you uh, Wenger fanboys out there. Or Wenger have got, like gone bust or something, haven't they? Or folded or sold to Victorinox or something. Anyway, oh, yeah. It's the mini champ. I've got a brand new everyday carry. Because I do carry the mini champ everywhere I go. Does it have the, this one does not have the pen though. One of the best things ever, I'm telling you, is the, um, is the pen. Boom, like that, and boom, there you go. Oh, I'll show you close up. And Emmy is male, just in case I uh, thought Emmy was a girl's name, and he comes from someplace green with cows in Switzerland. Sounds fantastic. And apparently I'm someplace in the wild. Wild suburbia, hmm. Thank you very much, Emmy. This note is typed on a Swiss-made Hermes, three Hermes, I think, 3000 typewriter. It's been in the basement for 50 years and it's still rocking. Unbelievable. Thank you very much, Emmy. And he's um, sent in a, a PB uh, Swiss Tools and Victorinox. Oh, two thumbs up and a big fonz.
Hey. First up, we have the Mini Champ. Oh, I love the Mini Champ. It has been, ta-da, here's mine. It has been my everyday carry for, I don't know, a, oh, maybe 10 years now. I don't know. I used to use like a Spartan or a larger one. Um, but the Mini Champ for me is the Dark's Guts. Um, you'll notice that this one is, it's got the, um, it's got the metal outer shell instead of the, uh, what is it, Celador or something, I think they call it, um, outer one. Uh, but it's a, it's an identical knife, except you'll notice it's much thinner. Look at that. Why is that? Because they drop the pen. Here's the pen I told you about. I love the pen. The amount of times this has come in handy, everyone says, has somebody got a pen? Yep, I whip this out. And, you know, and look, because you put it out like that, it works incredibly well. As a pen, it's fantastic. You can replace the ink. Absolutely brilliant. Number of times I use that. Ah, oh, it's so invaluable. Tweezers, of course, they come in real handy. Um, so they're the unfortunately the two things you lose in this one. But oh, this is just sex on a stick. Oh, oh. Excuse me. I'm gonna go have a quiet time in the corner and just just rub this. Now the Mini Champ for me, as an everyday carry, hits the perfect spot. It really does, um, because it's got practically everything you need in the smallest possible lightest weight volume. The scissors are fantastic. These are great. I use them for cutting through pins on PCBs and everything. They've never gone sharp. It's not just for cutting paper or your fingernails or anything else. It can, it can cut serious stuff. I cut wire, all sorts of stuff with that. Um, you've got the Phillips. Absolutely fantastic. The Phillips tip seems to fit almost everything. It's nicely sharp pointed. Uh, you've got the bottle opener. I've used that a few times. Um, so that comes in handy. And you've got a standard knife, which I use for absolutely everything. And what else have we got? Here we go. We've got the uh, nail file on the back. Even um, the wife uses the nail file. I've got to admit, I've used it a few times myself. Um, and it's got a... Uh, just a point like that. I've used it for all sorts of various things. We've got ourselves, what is it, like a cuticle pusher or something, but I've used it as a large screwdriver, uh, for example, very hand, a flathead, and I've used it for all sorts of other um, stuff when you just need something sort of to lift things or do something like that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got ourselves the curved blade, which comes in handy. Um, a better, like, you know, if you want to run something along like that, it's better than the uh, rounded blade that we had before. Um, no, we've done that. Uh, what else have we got? Got ourselves the little hook on here. Um, it's like an orange peeler or something. I think they claim it is, but I've used it for various miscellaneous stuff. Very handy. And is that? No, that's not all she wrote. No, hang on. No, we're not there yet. No. Here we go, and we have ourselves the little uh, rule, the little depth stop rule on the thing, plus a little flathead screwdriver. Comes in handy for a ton of stuff, and that is my everyday carry knife. I highly recommend you get one. But, I don't know, I'm torn, I just love this one. It's so small and sexy, but the pen, the pen, the amount of times I've used the pen, oh, I'm not sure I could live without it. But, ironically, Emmy has included, I can't, can I get the name? There, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pronounce it, the Karen D. Arche? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, ballpoint pen. Sorry, I have not heard of it for you ballpoint pen aficionados, but it's Swiss made, and I'm sure it is the duck's guts. Oh, yep. Pretty good. But, yeah, that in combination with that is not as good as my mini champ in terms of functionality that is I'm sure it's a fine pen i love a good pen oh yeah that's beautiful maybe i can dual wield what do you think one in each pocket sounds like the bomb oh there's the money shot and just a couple of local ones because i can it's from carl good day carl turner is from uh north uh mclean in queensland so let's uh bloody queenslanders Australians don't know what I'm talking about. Let's have a look. Carl sent. Asked to pass on this PSU from a good friend of mine in the UK. All right. It requires my magic touch. <laughs> what is that? Destroy it? Try and explain it like I think I know what I'm talking about? 
Jeez, all right, here we go. It is, way pretty complicated little beastie. All right, we'll check it out. Double-sided loaded, wave soldered on the bottom. We can see the um, solder uh, feathing there on the pads. And uh, yeah, I don't know what it comes from. Let's check it out. And Carl has uh, re-gifted this one from Matthew Pine. He's from the uh, UK and well, let's take a look at it. Apparently it's uh, the PSU from an iMac thingamabobby. So it's probably going to be decent quality and it looks decent quality. Look at that, uh, not quite black. It might show up as black on the screen, but it's like a really sort of like almost a matte brown uh, solder mask. It's quite unusual. Um, not quite the even, you know, matte black doesn't... I. It's not quite like the other matte blacks I've seen. Anyway, it's a Delta. Um, Delta make good power supplies and exactly what you'd expect. Look, Nichi Con caps. No worries. The main uh, DC filter cap in there, Nichi Con. They're going to have another one under there. They've got some tape separating it from the um, main heatsink there. Although, why it's actually right under it, like almost, it's not taped onto the heatsink, is it? But yeah, why it's actually like. Why does it have to be there? I mean, oh, surely they could have got another arrangement because, well, you know, having it right next to the uh, heat sink's going to dry it out. Anyway, Nippon Chemicon caps over here. Everything's looking hunky-dory. The Celastic, that, that puppy looks out of place. Almost as if somebody's, somebody's had a go at that. Perhaps? Hmm, not entirely sure, but uh, uh, to 220 is flapping around in the breeze. You know, I'm not a big fan of that, even though they... That's not... Oh, that's not celastic. That's really tough stuff. Jeez, I don't know what that is, but yeah, I mean, they're doing the business on there. It's a decent quality supply, as you'd expect uh, to find in like a high-end, uh, in this case, a 27-inch uh, iMac. You know, like, yeah, they're, they're trying to shave dollars off, but, you know, they're going to put a decent power supply in the thing, and they have. And check it out. We even know who designed it. The EE was Song Haben. G'day, Song, maybe he watches, he or she, I don't know. Um, mechanical Engineer is another Song. There you go. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, is Song uh, Common in uh, China or wherever this was uh, developed as a first name. Um... Zhong Jin Wei, Song Jin Wei, Zhan Wei, perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, there you go. I love it how they put the designers on there. Now, as I uh, briefly mentioned before, the uh, sa uh, wave solder in the solver, the solder feathing on the pads. They make the pads slightly larger on the end of the chip. As I've explained, when it goes through the reflow process, the solder. Um, it catches on these solder thieves like this so it doesn't form vortices and all sorts of things and shorts out uh, stuff. It sort of peels the solder away from the last, from the pin before it. Otherwise, you might end up with uh, some shorts on your chip. Anyway, that's quite common. Double-sided load, uh, wave soldered on the bottom. And it's got some, yep, got some poly switches over there. So there you go. Here's a quick look at an iMac power supply. Not bad quality. Next up, we got one for... Who's it for? Me! For you, Sagan! Yeah! You got your own mailbag! <laughs> Alrighty, it's from... We don't know. Oh, yes, we do. No, it's... Well, it's Amazon packaging. So, it's supposed to be frustration-free packaging. Okay, so... Maybe if you can get that and tear it. Hey. Yeah? These things are pretty hard. Uh, yeah, so we don't know who it's from, but what is it? Ta da! It's a book! Yeah! The Ladybird Book of The Shed! Excellent! <laughs> that looks like a good book, say again. Yeah! Yeah? We'll read that one tonight? Yeah! Yeah, okay, we don't know who it's from though, do we? No. Oh, yes, we do! There's a little note in here. <laughs> oh, no, that's just the Amazon stuff. Oh, hi, say again. Happy fifth birthday! It's not quite your fifth birthday yet, is it? No. No, but soon. Not that far away. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, get Daddy to read the joys of having your own shed to you. He has his own lab and storage bunker, don't I? You like coming to Daddy's lab, yeah. don't you? It's the best fun, isn't it? And the bunker's cool. Yeah, 
It's got lots of stuff, doesn't it? It has got lots of stuff, yeah? yeah. Now, that's a lot of pages. It is a lot of pages, but it looks like a good story. It's all about the shed, okay? <gasps> oh, look. He's painting in the shed, doing all sorts of stuff in the shed. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's an awesome shed. That one's got like a missile launching console or something. Yeah, yeah, but what is all of those things? Well, I don't know. That looks like it looks like it's got radar screens and everything. Wait, so that's a bit. Let's read those words there. Here we go. Not many people have seen inside this shed. It is a government research shed, <gasps> half a mile underground at Porton Down, wherever Porton Down is. This high tech it sounds like it's in England or something, maybe. And this high tech facility is kept ready for use at a moment's notice. It is where the government will potter. Will Potter? What's Potter? Will <laughs> Potter in the event of a nuclear attack? There you go. Wow, we can read all about the shed tonight, Sagan. Yeah. Say thank you. Thank you. Catch you next time. Catch you next time. Yeah.